Hey guys, it's Leah here from Prestige Worldwide Medical Consulting, um, U.S. Army Physician Assistant, veteran, and uh, former CMP examiner. Today I want to come on and talk really quickly about um, the difference between DBQs, Disability Benefit Questionnaires, and Nexus Letters, or Independent Medical Opinions. So a lot of veterans don't really know or understand what the difference between these two types of documents are. And um, there, there are some kind of big differences. Um, you can kind of include some of the information from the medical opinion on the DBQ um, and vice versa if you, if you really wanted to. Um, but I wanted to try to give like a down and dirty explanation of what some of those primary differences are to give um, that's a better understanding of what may be important for them in their um, claim and their situation. So I just want to throw out there that I am not an accredited claims agent, BSO, or an attorney. I'm a medical expert. I assist veterans with um, medical opinions or scientific um as we will discuss, technical reports that help show a link between their service and an illness or an injury. Um, if you need assistance from um, an administrative expert, if you go to va.gov, there is a comprehensive list that you can search to find someone in your area. Also, you should have a free county veteran service officer. Um, if you just Google veteran service officer in whatever county you live in, that you can go and um, get some information from on the filing process. So, Back to what we were gonna discuss, um, DBQs, Disability Benefit Questionnaires, and Independent Medical Opinion Letters or Nexus Letters. So first of all, I wanna discuss, um, I guess, what is a Nexus Letter, right? A Nexus Letter, as I discussed before, is a technical report written by a healthcare professional that shows a link between um, an injury or illness and a veteran's service, okay? So that injury or illness may have happened many, many years ago, and there's been a large gap in time, or perhaps this is an injury that is related secondarily to another condition um, that someone's already service-connected for. An example would be a veteran is service-connected for PTSD, and they subsequently develop migraine headaches that are um, you know, caused by that PTSD PTSD or aggravated by that PTSD, um, they may want a nexus letter or it's also, you know, the technical term is independent medical opinion. Um, nexus is kind of slang, what uh, veterans will, you know, the community uses a lot. Um, veterans may want to get an opinion from their healthcare provider or another um, medical expert to show that relationship, right? And usually it's full of research and, you um, you know, scientific data points that kind of support the opinion, right? So simply having a medical professional say, I think their PTSD is related to their um, migraine or whatever condition may not be super helpful if it is not backed up by scientific evidence to, sh to help support the opinion, right? Simply saying, I'm Dr. So-and-so and I believe this or that, it, it may have be helpful, but if it's full of factual data points to support that opinion, that makes it stronger, right? Um, so independent medical opinion or nexus letter is when a healthcare professional, whether it's a doctor or a PA, a nurse practitioner, um, or other um, healthcare provider writes an opinion that shows that relationship. Um, what kind of other healthcare professionals can write these types of opinions? So, um, you know, audiologists will frequently write these types of opinions related to hearing loss, right? They're also doctors, but they are um, doctors of audiology, right? They're not medical doctors. Um, you know, optometrists may write them. Um, psychologists, right? They, they, psychologists are not medical doctors, right? They are doctors um, uh, in psychology, right? Uh, you know, I, I think there's a you know, I'm not sure that there's a really like firm, strict rule about who can write a medical opinion, right? Um, I know M21, the VA's policy um, manual, adjudication manual, does discuss um, what type of healthcare professionals they will accept for DBQs. But for medical opinions, I have yet to see something out there that really that that really says this person or this person can or can't, right? I've seen chiropractors write these types of letters. I've actually seen a really fantastic nurse. Um, you know, write the letter, does it carry as much evidence? You know, I don't know. Um, I think it just depends if you have a physician who writes a letter that has no, you know, probative value because there's no like 
information in there as to why their opinion is what it is, but then you have a nurse who writes a fantastic opinion, you know, I personally would think that that would carry more weight. Like I said, I've seen very, um, I, I know that there are nurses that have, um, medical legal nurses that write these types of reports. Um, if you can get this type of report and it's well written from your primary care physician or their nurse or whoever, you know, that may be very helpful to you. Um, so, you know, physical therapists, again, physical therapists are really not um, what's considered acceptable for DBQs from my understanding. Again, you may want to follow up with your accredited agent on this, but, you know, there's nothing saying they can't add a medical opinion letter to help support your case, right? Okay, so nexus letters, we talked about that. What should be in a nexus letter? Well, the nexus letter should discuss like who the writer is, like what are their, um, what is their history or qualifications? You know, what, ex what, what, um, Areas have they worked in the past? So for me, for example, I write, hey, I'm Leah Buckles. I'm a U.S. Army veteran, physician assistant. Um, I've worked in family practice, emergency medicine. Um, I served in, you know, on active duty as a physician assistant for many years as um, a special forces battalion physician assistant, um, infantry, etc. cetera. Um, I describe, you know, my what I've reviewed of the client's um, history, so their claims file, um, uh, you know, their VA medical center notes, their previous compens compensation and pension exams, um, you know, whatever I've reviewed of that veteran's history. Um, if there's something specific I want to discuss, you know, I will point to those you know, he was seen for his knee pain in 1974 on this date. You know, I will list those things that I believe are important and relevant to the case. Um, and then I will discuss how it's, you know, you know, affected their life over the over the years. You know, he has difficulty in the workplace. He can't carry his grandchildren, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then I will discuss, you know, whatever medical literature I'll put in, you know, three or four different pieces of medical literature, sometimes more supporting my opinion, right? If it's, you know, the left knee is bothering the right knee over years and years, I'll put in literature that supports contralateral, contralateral knee injuries um, through the kinetic chain theory can disrupt and cause problems in whatever the other joint is, okay? Um, if it's, you know, a back pain injury that happened 10 or 15 years ago, I may discuss um, sub, sub um, failure ligament issues that, you know, show the degenerative cascade over time that, you know, even a single injury can lead to long-term problems in degenerative arthritis, right? Um, sorry about the glare, I just noticed that. Um, so beyond that, that's kind of what a nexus letter will show. And then I will wrap up with what my medical opinion is, right? So I'll say, you know, I'll kind of rephrase and re-synopse what I've said throughout. And then I'll say, you know, it is my professional medical opinion after review of the medical history, um, the, you know, pertinent records, claims file or whatever, that it is either at least as likely as not, um, more likely than not, or due to, you know, or if it's a negative opinion, you know, your CMP examiner or whoever may write, it is not due to, right? Um, or less likely than not. But I'll write, it is at least as likely as not, more likely than not, or due to this service-connected condition or this service-connected um, injury or um, incident that happened, right? And then I say, please empathize with the veteran as they will, they are unlikely to recover, and that's it, right? So why do I use uh, more likely than not or less likely than not or at least as likely as not? Sometimes veterans will ask me this. So it's really important to me not to overinflate an opinion because I think it decreases the credibility, right? So if I put more likely than not on every single opinion I wrote, to me, that means that I just am saying everything is more likely than not related. And, and that's not always the case, right? So if you have something that is, um, you know, maybe has other risk factors, for example, in sleep apnea, a lot of times you have other risk factors. If you're male gender, if you're overweight, if you're um, a specific race, um, there are other risk factors, right? And so I, I will say it's at least as likely as not a lot of the time if I'm writing that type of opinion. More likely than not, I will reserve for things that have a, a more focused and narrow scope of what could be causing it. For example, um, if someone develops radiculopathy related to their back pain, right? <coughs> That's something I'm going to say, excuse me, more likely than not, or perhaps um, due to, right? 
So at any rate, that's just all based on the original opinion writer's, you know, opinion as to what they're going to write. Um, so let's move, moving on to DBQs. Okay. So what is a DBQ? A disability benefit questionnaire is something that um, is filled out that helps quantify, um, and I'll get into quantifying things in a second, um, what the specific, um, you know, really dials into how is that affecting that person to help the rater decide what the rating criteria um, has, which which criteria has been met and what percentage they're gonna fall under, okay? From my understanding, <clears throat> I'm sorry for this cough, you know, the corona's out there. Um, so the uh, DBQs were not always there, but they were made to help um, make things easier, right? So the 38 Code of Federal Regulation discusses um, what the percentages for each condition are. And it used to be that a, that, um, a medical expert could write, you know, those specific um, things that marry up to that regulation into their opinion, and then they could be rated based on that. The VA decided to, um, gosh, dang it, hang on. <coughs> My goodness, the VA decided to create DBQs to help compile that evidence more um, efficiently so that the raters could determine what where they fell in at the rating criteria, right? So um, basically a DBQ is a form that you can take to your healthcare provider. It's also performed at the CMP examination, so you don't have to have this done. The CMP examiner is gonna provide a medical opinion and they are gonna do a DBQ if you're called in for a CMP. And that form will have things if it's orthopedic in nature, for example, like range of motion and different things that will align with what the rating criteria is. So I consider this quantitative information, right? And so what do I mean by quantitative versus qualitative, okay? So qualitative essentially means that is it, it's like a light switch, turning it on or off. So is it yes or no, is it service connected? That is what the nexus letter can help to establish. And then the DBQ is quantitative, meaning let's dial it in and find out what the percentage should be, right? Now, this is not up to the examiner. It's up to the rater to determine based on their evaluation of the evidence, right? So quantitative versus qualitative. I hope that was helpful for you to understand what a nexus letter and a DBQ is. Neither of these are required because the VA examiner is going to provide those for you when you attend your CMP exam, but you can also get these externally from your own healthcare provider or any expert of your choosing. All right, um, thanks for watching and I will talk to you guys soon. I hope that was helpful. See you later.